This is Psalms 83. What do you want? Two. We from top, just go down. Psalms 83. Keep not thy silence, O power, Yahweh Shai. Hold up thy peace. Be not still, O Yahweh Shai. Look for low thine enemies. Make a tumult. What's there, Baba Kasha? So that's, that makes it clear. Thine enemies make a tumult. You know, not every, as I said, this isn't Sesame Street where everybody's going to be happy and holding hands and singing and skipping around. No, this isn't the time. We have enemies. We are in a time of war right now. But it's not a carnal war, it's a spiritual war. You know, we've got brothers dealing with all kinds of different demons coming up yeah. on them. It's like, it's an invisible war which most of the world can't see because they're not, they don't have that spiritual discernment. But this war, this war, is war and it's going on hot and heavy against the men of the Lord. You know, I mean, just simple thing. You're trying to put out videos on YouTube, what? YouTube's striking your channel and shit. What do you think that is? You think that's just random? No, that is an aspect of the spiritual warfare. Them trying to stop this word from going out. Keep reading, Mother Kasha. For Lord, our enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up thy head. Yeah. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Yep. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Pause there, Baba Kasha. So that's what they're trying to do, trying to do. They're trying to take the name of Israel out of remembrance and cut off our people. See, if Esau had his way, first of all, if Esau had his way, he'd destroy every last single one of us. But you can't do that because Yahweh said, um, he made, he made Esau that, that, that um, how do you say, um, that tongue-in-cheek tongue joke saying if you, could, if you could destroy all of the house of um, oh, yeah. Israel, you Jim. know, he'd do away with us. You can't do that. If you can search out to the depths oh, of the depth, ocean, yeah, yeah. he'd do away with us. Esau can't do with us. Yeah, or if you can search out the heavens, the Most High would do away with us. And that brings me back onto the point that I wanted to go to in Obadiah, Baba Kasha, about Esau trying to search out the heavens. And he can't do it because he's just a man. And, and the Most High has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So although Esau's doing all this wickedness, although it may look in the physical realm that Esau's got, got the victory in the bag, you know, you might look at it and think, oh, Esau, how can Esau go down? Well, guess what? Next level, that there are levels to, this, to the realms, you know? And Esau's on, on this level, and when Yahashai comes back, it's going to be made manifest that there are higher echelons to existence. High, high, higher, um, higher powers, and everybody's going to know that, but read uh, Obadiah 1 and... and Obadiah 1! About the uh, nest in the stars, but Kasha. It gets straight to the point. Obadiah 1 and 3. The pride of the heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Yep, we just broke that down about them, them, them being in a base state and dwelling in caves. Whose habitation is high, but saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Yep. Though that exalt thyself. Sorry, pause it, Baba And that's another thing. When you look at these cities all around the world where Edomites have gone and they've, they've, they've established themselves, what do you see? All these tall ass skyscrapers. And that's Esau trying to magnify himself, being like, you know what? Yeah, I'm doing it. The most ain't nothing. I'm the highest, yeah? But first of all, Esau's going up because you're not supposed to build above three stories because it's ridiculous. Look, just look at what happened on 9-11. Right. How many people died there? Well, if Esau had adhered to the law and not built those those towers so high, you never you wouldn't have an, an incident like that. But you know what? It had to happen because that's how your how your how your wanted things to play out. But in our kingdom, we're going to be adhering to the laws. Carry on, Baba Shah. Here we go. This is um, his habitation is high, but saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Thou that exalt thyself as the eagle. Thou that set thy nest among the stars, rent when I bring thee down, saith the Lord, you have a shine. Yep, so first of all, let's break down the eagle. What was the symbol of the um, Roman Empire? The eagle. Now, this is the thing you can see, history repeats itself, you know. Once again, King Solomon said there's nothing new under, under the sun. What is the symbol of the Americans? The eagle. So that's how we know these people are who they are because um, there's certain. Um, telltale signs to look for in the prophecies to see who's who. Now it says, Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, from thence will I bring thee down. So as I was saying, around 1969, 
That's when they, they were trying to go up into space. He's all trying to claim that he went to, to the moon, which is a false claim and a lie. Um, but ever since then, the Most High has been bringing this man down. Because what happened after 1969? Uh, you, you had, what is it, uh, all these wars, uh, Vietnam War. You know, the Americans um, had been going around kicking ass for the most, most part before that. But at war, that, sh that fractured the nation. You know, people started getting into all kind of drugs and shit. You had the hippie movement. Households started falling apart. Then they're pushing that feminism shit, you know? Then, um, yeah, with the, with the feminism shit, you had the, the destructuring of the household. So then the women are going out to work. The men are out of the house. You've got children being raised with their by their mum, by their mums or by the state going into the school systems. Basically, Esau's whole thing has just been crumbling. Every facet of his society has been falling apart and it's getting worse and worse and worse to the point where we're at right now in this, at this time. So as I said in the beginning, we're supposed to measure the time diligently. Now anybody in their right mind can see that America is going down, just look at the economy. And that's another telltale sign of, of, of this empire because um, I was watching a video um, about a week or two ago about how um, the fall of the Roman Empire and the things that precipitated the, the fall of the empire and it had a lot to do with their financial institutions and, and the, the way the money was working because um, they, they were living on a, um, what do you call it, um, oh, same thing that we've got now where basically that they, they um, devalued the currency, they started printing more, more, right now what they're doing is they're printing more and more FRNs so the more of the money that's in circulation the less valuable it is it's the same thing that happened in the ancient uh, Roman Empire. So therefore... Um, and another reason, if I may. Go ahead. The, the Roman Empire, they spread their army too thin. Too thin, yeah. Because they were everywhere and what? They got attacked and eventually that's how they went down. That is a very good point for the wider for bringing, their, bringing it out because they spent a lot of their money on their military, you know? So all their money was being invested and they were spreading themselves too thinly. It's the same thing with America right now. All their money, for the most part, is going on their military and they're spreading themselves too thin. Um, yeah. I've got Isaiah, um, um, what's it, what's it, Smith? Go ahead. Wonder. Yeah, that's good, brother. Sure. This Go is on. Isaiah. This is Isaiah. 56 and... Oh, pause there, brother, because 54. And that's another reason how you can see who these Edomites are, because what is their blessing? Their blessing is the sword. sword. So therefore, they're going to spend all their time sharpening that sword, trying to make that short sword as perfect and as uh, destructive as they possibly can. But guess what? That very same blessing, that very same sword that was granted unto you is gonna be your, your part of your destruction. Go ahead, Baba Kasha. This is Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Yep. And I have created the waster to destroy it. Now, what is that instrument that was created? The great sword. What's the greatest, most powerful sword on earth at the moment? Intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBM missiles. So when it says, I've created the smith that bloweth the coals, that means that East, uh, the most I put it, the understanding in, in these men, these, these scientists, to come up with this instrument, the great waste that, that will destroy. Read that again, Mother Kusha. Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy. Yep, that waster is those ICBMs. Keep reading, Baba Kishar, there's more. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Yeah, that's going into something else, isn't it? That's all right. That's pretty much just the yeah. end of the the, um, the the verse. That's that's okay. That's good. Yeah. But so basically, Esau's um, Esau's great technology, which he's prided himself on, and that is used to um, subjugate all the nations. The most I says, no weapon that formed against that's formed against us is going to prosper. So we don't have to be scared of Esau's weapons and Esau's technology, because we've got Yahweh Hashem Yahshai on our side. And if the Lord be against us, who can be, if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? So. Um, I'm going to go back into Esau's blessing. If we get Genesis um, 27, where Isaac. Oh, you don't have it. I haven't got it. I'll read it, don't worry. So, yeah, let me, I'm going to get into Genesis. Let's go into who Esau is and how he's going to be. Genesis um, 27. Yeah, I've got it. Right, let's go back to 25. Let me see the room. I've got 
25. If not, I'll bring it out and you bring it out 27 to see if I've got 25. Yes, I've got 25. Right, so bring out the, the birth of Jacob and Esau, I'll be sure. No, 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 let me go back. I'll read this here and then we'll bring that out, alright? Alright, yeah. We're going to go right back to Genesis because I want to get into who, who Esau is, yeah? So this is Genesis 4. And Adam, who, who if you can receive it, that was your Harashai in the reincarnation, or the pre-incarnation, as you say. So he say, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from Yahweh. And she again bare his brother, Abel. And Abel was the keeper of sheep, but Cain was the tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the earth uh, from the ground as an offering unto Yahweh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof, and Yahweh had respect unto Abel and unto his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So you've got to imagine this, man. Cain must have been sitting in the corner, watching Abel's righteous sacrifice with fucking murderous intent, man. Just flipping... Yeah, demons would, like a demon's wool up in his inward part. That's right, man. Giving him side eyes and screw faces and all this kind of shit. I, I could just picture it, man, because I've got brothers in the world who are... Um, who are wicked, but um, uh, so I, I could kind of visualize what that must have kind of looked like. So yeah, if I could just say uh, they call that sibling rivalry, when when brothers are against because of you got it in the tribes, you, you know they call it sibling rivalry. Yeah, and that's not right, man, because you're not supposed to hate your brother, as we said earlier. He that hate if his brother is a murderer, and what what was the first murder that occurred on the earth between two brothers? So let's read on, and it said, but Cain had, and but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So Cain was told, man, look, if you do a good job, are you not going to be accepted? But if you don't, you know, sin lieth at the door. Cain had the fork in the road. Cain could have done the righteous thing, or he could have done the wicked thing. What did he choose to do? He chose to, to do the wicked thing. And why did he do that? Because he is adverse to the laws of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. If Yahweh was to say to Cain, go left, Cain's going to go right. If Yahweh said to Cain, Cain, go up, Cain's going to go down. Everything uh. is, he is built to be the adversary because he represents the spiritual demon Satan on this earth. Well, preacher. Go ahead. This is Psalms 51 and 16. But unto the wicked the most I saith, What hast thou to de declare my statutes? Or that should I take as my covenant in thy mouth? Yep. Sing thou hatest instruction, and cast of my words behind thee. Yep. When I saw a thief thou contendest with him, and hast been partakers with the adulterers. Pause there, Baba Kasha. So basically it's like, um, imagine you get a new appliance, like I don't know. Let's say you get a new car, right? And you've got an ownership manual for the car. And the, and the ownership manual says, okay, you've got to put this type of um, fuel in the car. Uh, you've got to do this to take care of the tires, you know, keep it maintain, maintaining it, right? Kane's the type of guy who will throw that behind his back and he, he'll put something stupid in the car. The car don't work. Let's say you put something like olive oil in the car, yeah? <laughs> Trying to start the car, the car's not working. And he's wondering, why isn't it working? Because you didn't obey the rules, stupid idiot, man. The rules are there for a reason. And that's why the Lord's statutes and commandments were given unto us. We're supposed to be showing the other nations the way in which they should walk. But Cain has raised himself up now, trying to act like he's the holy, the holy one, he's the chosen people, and he's leading all the other nations, and our people too, who are not in his truth, in the ways of wickedness. Uh, is there more in that? Sure. That's it on that. All right, I'll go back to the point then. So reading on, it says, um, Genesis 4 and 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Now that's an interesting uh, scripture there, which always stays in my mind. As I said, I've got brothers in the, in, in the flesh who, you know, they, 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 they're not brotherly. Yeah. You know? And um, Cain said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? You're supposed to be looking out for your brother, man. You're not supposed to be like, oh, well, I don't know who he is, I don't give a, I don't give a damn. 
that's not the spirit you're supposed to be in, especially with brothers in this truth, because when you come into this truth, this is, this is like your real family, man. Like, what did Yahweh Shai say? Who is my brother or my, or my mother, but them that do the will of my father? And really, if we are of the elect, we are all brothers, because we were the first spirits created. You know, Yahweh Shai is the first spirit brought forth, then he brought forth the 144,000, the elect. And that's why we, we fit together as, a, as one body, because um, we, we are um, kindred spirits, that's what they say, we're kindred spirits, if we be of those men. That's right, the first, if I may, the Go first ahead. fruits. Yeah, that's right, the first fruits. See, Cain got it twisted, maybe he thought, oh, well, I'm going to offer some first fruits as a sacrifice. It's <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's a side joke, but you know, the Lord ain't dealing with that kind of sacrifice, you know. The Lord's dealing with blood, you know, because... Yeah. Um, Again, here's another thing, just a quick one. I was in a, a cab this week, and I was driving, um, driving, the cab was driving me home, and I ended up driving past, I suppose, my old neighborhood where I grew up, and I went past the house of uh, some some, child, some guy who, I knew as a child, he went to the same primary school as me, and um, I was driving past his house, and um, at the door of his house, I guess his family still lives there, they had a, um, they'd used masking tape and they'd made a cross on the on the glass in the front of the house. Now they, I don't know if he's a Jake or not. I don't think he's a Jake. They're a Greek family, but they put the cross with a uh, masking tape on their door. And I looked at that and I thought to myself, that's folly. You know, that's folly because, brothers have said before, the power isn't in the cross. The cross was just the instrument that they used to kill our kill our um, our savior. The power really lies in the blood of our savior. Because it's the blood that covers us, not the cross. And that's another area where the, the Christians go off. They keep magnifying, oh, it's about the cross, the cross. The Lord died on the cross. No, it's about the blood. It's the blood of Yahweh Shaddai is, that was shed for the remission of sins of the elect of the nation of Israel. And Yahweh Shaddai didn't come to die on the cross to, um, to save everybody. No, 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 no. He was only sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So basically, Every, every sin, every transgression comes with a price. But if we be of the elect, our sins are covered and we are under grace because Yahweh Shai paid that, paid that price by shedding his own blood to buy us back, to redeem us. Go ahead. It's Ephesians 1 and 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Mm -hmm having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Mashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood. That's right. And the forgiveness of sins. That's right. According, according to the riches of his grace. That's right. That's Read that again, Baba Kashar. That's powerful, man. That's right on the point. Right this is Ephesians say. 1 and 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he have abounded to us in all wisdom and prudence. Yeah, keep going. It's and ha having, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure. Right, pause there, Baba Kashan. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. See, what we're doing right now is a great mystery to, to the majority of the world because they can't see um, the spiritual things that we see, the things that we've been given grace to understand and to discern. See, these people, they can't discern the times, which goes back to the overall arc of what I started talking about, about measuring the time diligently. How do you measure it? Well, paying attention to the time and to the signs. Keep going, Baba Kashan. And it says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, but in a dispensation of all fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things, in Mashiach, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him. So yeah, it's, the Lord's gathering us back together. Now I could go into that because, um, we could go into Ezekiel to break that down a bit, but I'm not going to go too deep into that because I want to stay on the topic of uh, going into who Esau is and what his role is. But yeah, as I was saying, just to cap that off, the, 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 the power is in the blood that was shed on the cross by Yahweh Shai. It's not in the cross. 
you know, let's say if they killed the, our Lord with a knife, would you would you put a picture of a knife in the front of your house? Or, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. But if they shot him with a gun, would you put a, 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 a masking tape gun on your front door, thinking that's going to thinking that that's going to protect you from from evil? If I may say, go ahead. It's it's oh. actually a ridicule to be wearing a cross because what's what are you doing? That's what Yahusha was crucified on, and that means it's actually an X. X in them out because yes. when they put them on that cross, what did they thought? They thought they could X Yahweh Shayat. It's actually a symbol of the anti yep. Christ. That's why I don't wear crosses. The brothers in the truth, they shouldn't be wearing any crosses. That is a good point. Of any um, beads. You know them praying beads. They yeah. shouldn't be wearing none of that. That's that's right. You got more to say? It all goes back to uh, Catholicism. Yep. That's it on that. Yeah, that's a good point, man. For why for bringing it out? Because again, it, it's like you're, they're ridiculing the fact that they killed our Messiah. You know, they, they, they're, trying, they're trying to make mockery of it. And yes, they are trying to X out his name. And what did the scripture say? Um, where our Lord was crucified. Um, Revelations, I think it's Revelations 10 and 10. Let me just look I'm for missing. that. Salak, yeah. It's missing, I'll just look for it. Revelations 11 or, 11, 11 or 10 and 10, one of them. Come on, bear with me. Yeah, because that's, um, if I, should, should yeah, I go ahead, go ahead. Because that's a demonic symbol. All these symbols in Christianity, they're demonic, paganistic symbols. Yeah. The cross, the churches, when you go inside the church, what does it look like? It actually looks like trees, groves. Yes, it does, because they used to gather under the trees. Yeah, that's why when you look at these um, churches, it actually looks like the groves, and that's what the modern day churches are, the groves. And what were they doing in groves? Sacrificing pigs. Yep. Doing all types of wickedness. Yeah, seances. All seances. So it's the same thing again today. Hey, you know what? That, that reminds me of something. Um, brief testimony. Some years ago, around, I think I started around late 2010, uh, through to 2018, quite a while. I used to work in a place where it was in a, um, they called it a theology school. So it's like a theology university, where supposedly um, people would go and they would study theology and, um, supposedly they, they'd be able to get an understanding of the Bible or whatever. Um, so that's supposedly because we know that um, all those Bible seminaries and those theology schools, there's just nothing but death and confusion in them places. You're not going to learn the, the breakdowns of this book by going to one of those uh, theology schools. But the fact of the matter is, is that it was all done in wickedness because um, they had this symbol in there which is um, IHS, which means in his service which is the symbol of the Jesuits. Okay. For those of you who, I don't know if you've researched the Jesuits, but basically the Jesuits were like, um, they were hated wherever they went because they always tried to infiltrate and push um, wicked agendas. Yeah, they'd be, so lucky. They'd be um, considered your, your modern day ninjas. Now how long it takes to become a Jesuit priest? Um, over 40 years, fully. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're, they're private ninjas. They take people, they assassinate people. Well, yeah. But they do it under the guise of being holy men, right. which they are not. Which is why I really love that film, The Exorcist, because you've got those Jesuit priests <laughs> who get their asses fucked up um, by, by a demon. You know, they, they don't win that battle. Well, I don't want to ruin the film for anybody, but um, it's a good film. Uh, but I could break that down spiritually on, in a breakdown. Lord willing, I will do that, actually. But the point of the matter is, is that the Jesuits are running this place, and um, they always had these adverts, and they were pushing these agendas, like, for example, They'd, they'd have like um, on the notice board for the students, it'd be like, oh, um, a debate on um, homosexuality in Islam or, or homosexuality in um, Christianity. Okay. And they'd be pushing these agendas. And they had all these um, posters up saying, are you confused about your sexuality? Come and talk to a council, all this kind of shit. They were basically, this is the thing. You think that a theology school is going to be teaching people righteousness. It was not doing nothing but teaching people wickedness. Now here's the point. One day I went out into the garden at the back of the place and I was looking at a tree. I'm thinking, the spirit just said to me, look up in the tree. And they had this owl statue hidden in a tree. Wow. And you wouldn't see it unless you were looking for it. But what does the owl represent? Uh, all seeing. All seeing. And it also it was like a grove. That's the whole point I'm trying to say. Because um, you were talking about they used to gather under the groves. It was hidden up in the tree and you wouldn't see it unless you were looking for it. But the spirit of the Lord made me look and I thought, whoa! So they're doing all this witchcraft here and all this kind of stuff. And um, what do they also do in Bohemian Grove? They sacrifice the children to Molech and isn't it the, the great owl? Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. got the precepts. So, yeah, if you could, Baba Kashar. 
But the owl is a symbolic of Esau um, being like a predator because they magnify the owl because they think the owl is an apex predator because the owl has the ability to turn its neck 360 degrees and it can also see in the dark. And Esau likes to do all his, all his shit in the dark so that's why they use the owl as their symbol because it's like, okay, we can see, we're doing our stuff but you don't know because we've got a, a, a secret levels of wisdom which you don't know. And yeah. if I may, them owls, they got um, eye salve. Yes, they do. But that's what the men and the Lord got. The men and the Lord got. We've got that eye salve. Yeah. We can see. We can yeah. see through the darkness. That's yeah, a good that's point. Why. And that's why Esau is uh, confounded. He's like, but hang on a minute. What is it? The, the Illuminati is founded in, what is it, 1776? Adam yeah. Weiser. So we've been doing all this stuff in secret for the past 1776, 1886, 1996. So is it 200, yeah. For, for over 200 years, we've been doing our stuff in secret. How is it that these grimy ass niggas who don't have anything to their name are able to see what we're doing? How, did they, how are they able to find out all the wickedness that we've been doing? How? How is this possible? How can they be here? Because we've done everything in our power to keep these people down. We put them into the public fool system. We taught them false histories. We taught them that they're black, that they're Hispanics, that they're West Indians. How on earth are these people coming back to this knowledge? You got something? Um, yeah. It's through the spirit and power of your Hawa Bashim Yahweh Shai. You've got a little something. Isaiah 47. Come on. And seven, 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. I will not meet thee as a man. <coughs> yeah, and that's speaking of your Shai. Now, we talked about the, the cross. When the Lord was on the scene 2,000 years ago, he came as a man in a humble spirit and meekness. They were able to, to kill our Lord. But that was the point because he had to be that um, sacrifice without blemish. Yeah. Going back to when Abraham was told uh, to sacrifice his son Isaac back in back in Genesis, who Isaac was Yahushai. But the Lord stopped Abraham in that time and says, you know, I'm going to do the sacrifice in my own time. Roughly paraphrasing, which is when Yahushai came back in his lot. Now they were able to kill our Lord two thousand years ago. But guess what? What did it say? I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as, as a man. man. So Yahushua is not coming back as some simple man in the flesh who you can put a sword in and stab him or um, they put a spear in his side when he's on the cross. And so like that, the reason I've got that because it says um, that nakedness should be uncovered. Yeah. So that nakedness, what you're talking about, 776, there was a time where you couldn't speak about this. You get killed. That's right. But now it's all out in the open. Even the average person you ask him, do you know about the Illuminati? Yeah. And they say, yes, yeah, I'm watching videos. So that's Esau's nakedness being uncovered. That's why I got this scripture out. That, that's a good point, and it's right on the point. Good, good precept and right on the point. Because it's like a woman, man. If you see a woman's private parts, that's her nakedness being uncovered. If you see a woman just walking up and down the street with her tits out and her, and her eyes showing, that's her nakedness being uncovered. And that's how Esau's being revealed in this time. Yeah. Uh, as the scriptures said. And, it's a, and if I could just add, it's a, it's a shame unto them. So yeah. all these women walking up and down naked, I'm staying on point. It's a shame unto them. They're exposing himself. So that's what's happening to Esau. It's a shame unto him and he's being exposed. Yep. Is that the scripture which said, lift up the leg and cover the fire? Oh, yeah, 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 it is. Wait, take the most. Yeah, it is. Make the bare leg. Go ahead, read it out. All right. Isaiah 47 and 2. Take the millstones. Again, grind, again uh, the millstone. Go ahead. And grind mill. Uncover the locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the fire. Pass over the rivers. Yep. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yet thy shame shall be seen. That's, That's it. right. That's the one. And I'm going to speak on that, if I may. Last year, you had our, a lot of people around the world rising up, and they wanted to take down these images of colonialism that have been put up around the world, like a lot of these statues of these, um, you know, uh, colonialists, oh, yes, like I slave traders that, yeah. and stuff like that. I remember there was huge debates because these statues were being pulled down, and you had people on, uh, what is it, LBC. Uh, that radio station LBC over here calling up and saying oh it's terrible it's terrible we can't change the past um, you got to get over it you know and it doesn't change what we did um, you know yeah they did this but they weren't bad people though all these Edenites were calling up and trying to defend the fact that these statues shouldn't be taken ta taken down but what it was is the spirit of the Most High coming on the people yeah now the people are waking up to the fact that hang on a minute this road is named after this slave trader or this statue of, of this person in this university is of someone who owned this plantation or that plantation. Now it's coming to people's knowledge that, hang on a minute, these guys who have gone around the world and proclaimed themselves 
to be the great men, the enlightened men, the, 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 the men who um, help guide society to um, enlightenment, there was no enlightenment in them. It was only guiding people more and more into the ways of darkness and of wickedness and of oppression, which is what Esau thrives in. So holding that, going back to the point of Esau, back in Genesis 4, and it says, And Yahweh said unto Cain, 4 and 9, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? So basically Cain didn't give a, give a shit, man. And it says, And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now thou art cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And that's exactly what Esau is, a fugitive and a vagabond. See, he's got his place where he's supposed to be dwelling, which is Mount Seir, the land of Bosra. But he ain't, he ain't dwelling in this place. He's gone all around the world and invaded everybody else's lands and has taken them and called the lands after his own names. And what does the scripture say? You're not supposed to remo remove the landmarks. the landmarks and you're not supposed to um, call the land after your own name. And that's exactly what he's done. Go ahead. Got a precept. This is Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yeah, also because he transgresseth by wine. He is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home. That's right. Who enlargeth his desire as hell. And is as death and cannot be satisfied. That's right. But gaveth unto him all nations. And heapeth unto him all, all people. people. And that's exactly what he's done. He's got all the nations basically following after his ways, his rules and his customs, which is why a lot of the um, people, other nations, they're trying to be like Esau. When you look at the Moabites, we brought this up before, they're not wearing their ancient garments, you know, they're not keeping their ancient customs, they're following after the ways of the Edomites, just as the Ammonites are and, and many of the Ishmaelites and the other nations, they're all following, trying to be like Esau, wearing their business suits, with the stupid ties around their neck and carrying their briefcases because they think that that is the way to be. But Esau is not the way to be. He's clean contrary to the way things are supposed to be. Got another one? Uh, that's, that's, that's it on that. Alright, cool. So basically it says, And Cain said unto Yahweh, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face I shall be hid. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And it says, But Yahweh saith unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And Yahweh set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Now, what was the mark that Yahweh set upon Cain? Pigmentation. Stripped of, um, stripped of pigmentation. That's correct. To be stripped of your pig pigmentation, to be stripped of your melanin, is called leprosy in the Bible. So Esau was cursed with the plague of leprosy. Now I want to bring something out as well. You've got different types of lepers. You've got clean lepers and you've got unclean lepers. That's why in the Levitical law, if you had a, um, a breakout of leprosy on your skin, you'd have to go to the priest and be examined and he would determine if what, what, what the plague of leprosy was. Wow. So, so for example, if you had a thin yellow hair, coming out your head, that would be considered leprosy. What is the image that Esau promotes around the world as being leprosy. beautiful? Yep. Blonde haired women. Yep. Me personally, I never felt being feeling blonde haired women, but you know, that's what Esau tried to push. But that's actually a sign of uncleanness. Yeah. Um, speaking again, using another example, 